Good day. Today, we're going to take you a little bit on a tour of the Pardo Theater at Brigham Young University as part of what is called a scavenger hunt, learning all the different parts of the theaters. Um, so we can use that terminology as we have your final assignment when you will be actually designing um, a set for the Pardo stage. Let me now flip my camera so that you're actually seeing what I'm seeing. Currently I'm standing in the auditorium of the house, um, which is um, the reference of a theater space, is its house. And I'm standing in the auditorium or the seating area as I am sitting here looking at the, uh, the set. Anything to my right is referred to as house right, and anything to my left is house left referring to the audience as they look at the theater space. I'm gonna walk down, however, to the stage and we're gonna start looking at different parts of the stage. The Pardo Theater is a proscenium stage, which means that the audience is looking all from one direction towards the space, looking through what is referred to as a picture frame. And that is what is done with a proscenium. This is the proscenium wall of the theater. If you sit back far enough, you would note that it is a frame that goes all around the theater opening, and we see everything through that frame that is referred to as the proscenium. Now, the proscenium is important to us because the very back of the proscenium, which is back here, which the audience never sees, the back side of the proscenium, is referred to as the plaster line of the theater. This is a line that goes all the way across the theater space to the other proscenium on the other side. So it's a line that cuts completely across the stage. You'll note when we look at ground plans later on, you'll see a dotted line that is the plaster line of the theater. Everything in front of that plaster line is referred to as the apron of the stage. So this portion from the plaster line out is the proscenium. That is going from the plaster line down stage, which means going towards the audience. And then everything that is upstage, going up away from the audience, is referred to as uh, the stage itself. This is the apron. This is the stage. Now, as I stand on stage, we referred to house right and house left. As I am on stage, we now become actors, and this is referred to as stage right, which you will note now is house left for the audience, but stage right for the actors. And this is stage left. So as an actor, I can move down stage, I can move up stage, I can move stage left, or I can move stage right. Those are all ways of determining areas of the stage as we look at it. I'm also standing here with a friend. There is a ghost light standing on stage. We never leave a theater in the dark because it's a dangerous space for someone to walk into. They could fall off the stage or trip on some of the set pieces that are on stage. So we always leave a ghost light in uh, of a theater space. Also, now that we've determined a plaster line, we can introduce you to some of the lighting positions in a theater. Anything that is downstage of the plaster line is referred to as a beam position. So if I look up above myself, I'll see that I have instruments, lighting instruments right here hanging in beam position one. Then here is beam position two, and here is beam position three. So there are three beam positions, one, two, three, going over the head of the audience. We refer to um, any position, lighting position over the audience as a beam position. And now if we look past the plaster line this direction, we'll note that we have lights hanging upstage, going upstage of the plaster line. And again, those are numbered one, closest to the uh, proscenium line, two, three, and four, and five, and it would continue for as many electrics as we have. And we have quite a few electrics for this current production that's on stage. So 
everything is counted from the plaster line upstage for electrics and downstage for beams. It's important to also note while we're talking about lighting in a theater space that as I stand here on stage you'll notice that there's kind of a ladder here over on the side that has some lights in it and further down there is another one over here. That one doesn't have any lights in it. They're not using a lot of lights right now but you can and there's another set of them on this side of the stage over here and right here. These are called cove positions. They are positions that are in front of the plaster line, again, which is right here. There's one, two cove positions in the Pardo Theater. They come in pairs. We don't count four of them. We just say that there are two on this side and then there are the matching two on this side of the house. Those are cove positions. You'll also notice that we have speakers hanging throughout the house. And this theater actually has surround, so we have speakers all the way around the audience. I'm currently standing on the apron again, and we'll look back at the theater space, and we'll look up again at uh, what's going on overhead. We know that we have lighting instruments hanging there. They're all hanging on hard pipes that run across the stage that are referred to as battens. At the back of this stage, you'll see a cyclorama, or a psyche, which is a large fabric drop piece that's made out of a fabric that if we light it from the front, it's opaque. If it's lit from behind, it becomes transparent. That is our backdrop. We would more typically then have legs or black fabric hanging down the side of the stage. We have one large panel back over here. It's not technically a leg, but we often use legs at the side of the stage to help mask the sides of the stage, the area that goes from the proscenium off stage, which we call the wing of the stage. That's where actors stand in reserve before they come on stage. We also would more typically um, have curtains hanging up above, and I'm going to walk up stage because you can actually find them. They do exist, though they're not being seen for this particular production. Here's the bottom of the site, just so you get a better view of that also. You'll note if we look back over here that there are curtains hanging in inter intervals up on the stage. Those are referred to as borders, and more typically, they are dropped in to help mask the actual bat and so the audience can't see them. But for this particular production, they wanted to be able to have the audience see all the battens and all the extremities of the theater space. Let's continue over on the side of the stage. And you'll see that we have a fly system for this theater. That means that we can actually run pieces up and down on the stage, and it goes quite a ways up into the theater. There's a lot of battens up there that are not being used. These are the fly, this is the fly system, and if I walked over to any one of these brakes, I could undo the brake by taking the choke off of it, the, this chain link, and then I could open it up and I could actually pull on the ropes so that I can make things go up and down. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna ruin anything on stage right now. But you'll notice that each of these ropes has an arbor, which is a metal cage that we can add stage weights to. So here are the stage weights on the battens, or on the arbors, I'm sorry, that actually counter the weight of anything that's hanging out on one of the battens to make it so that we can run it up and down easily. Let's walk back out. I'm currently walking out of the wing that's behind the proscenium so that I'm now back out on the stage or also referred to as the deck. The actual platform that we walk on the stage is called the deck. Right above me is something that might not be easy to see, but if I look up here, you'll notice there is a curtain that's right behind the plaster line of the theater. That's actually the grand drape for this stage, and if we dropped it in, we'd have a full red curtain masking off the set. But you'll notice that the set for this production actually goes out past the plaster line, so the curtain can't be used for this production. It would hang up on the set. That is the grand drape that would be used to cut off the show if we... Uh, 
we're using a grand rate for the, this production, which we are not currently using. Now, another term that is on your sheet is a crossover. We frequently would have curtains at the back of a stage. And in this production, if we drop that cyclorama down to the ground, we would have a way for actors to actually walk all the way across the stage. So here's behind that cyclorama. And if we had that down, there would be a crossover back here. So actors could cross over and go to the other side of the stage without the audience seeing them. Right behind this psych, you'll notice there's a black curtain that goes the full weight width of the stage. That's called a traveler. We don't have a traveler in use in a stage because we can't get it down, but there is a traveler back here that's probably hanging out of sight just so it's not being used for this production. I, I mentioned that above me, or way up above me, are the pipes for the theater, but you might notice that there are actually slats of wood at the very top. That's the grid of the house that can be actually walked on as people go walk back and forth way above the stage to work on pieces that are hanging down. That's the grid. As I'm standing here, center of the stage, and we would refer to that as the center line of the stage, it's actually not painted on there, but we actually have a tape mark for this production where the center line is. This is a line that runs all the way up the center of the stage. We'll use the plaster line coming across the stage and the center line going upstage to actually help place the scenery on stage using the ground plan. And the last thing we'll notice is that there are lots of places for people to sit, but some of the best seats in the house are right here in the center. And we often refer to those as the king's seat because historically the king came and sat in the best seats in the theater. So those are the king's seat. I think I might actually have one more term that is actually on your scavenger hunt called a teaser. Teasers is simply another name for borders. I mentioned that those are borders up there. They're often referred to as teasers as well. So that should pretty much match all of your terminologies that are on your sheet. I've come down to the Nelke Theater just to show you a few things on this stage because they happen to be here and they weren't in the Pardo. So with this stage and all of its curtains in place, I can again talk you through here is the proscenium of the stage that goes all the way across because we're looking at a proscenium theater again. And of course, again, the back line of it where the curtain is would be referred to as the plaster line of this theater. And as if you look at the plaster line, you'll see that it has very small of an apron here in front. The rest of it is all full deck for the stage. But you can also notice that this has a grand drape, so the curtain is in place and can be closed to close the audience off from the show. And now you can see what um, the teasers or the borders actually look like as they're masking the pipes up above. Here's the pipelines up above. And there are the legs that also mask the side or the wing of the stage so the audience can't look backstage. This theater is hung more correctly to what a regular theater would look like in masking so that the audience cannot see uh, the backstage area. Again, looking up above, we'll see that from the plaster line, we have one, two, three electrics in this theater. And we have one beam position and we have one cove position. So again, using those same terminologies, we can look at this theater and get a feel for what it has for support of its production. This is the Nilke Theater. So that pretty much introduces you to um, the Pardo Theater that you're going to be using for your uh, project for the um, uh, the scenic segment of this class and um, that hopefully walks you through the theater since you um, can't be here physically that allows you to get a feel for what the Pardo looks like and hopefully you've seen a production in here so you get kind of a sense of what the Pardo theater is really like.